Well, hello there. Recently, I had the opportunity to go to a week-long VEX camp where competitors had four and a half days to build a robot and half day to compete against each other. The goal of the camp was to build a robot that specialized in one scoring method, either caps or balls. My team designed Samwise Gamjeff, a dual flywheel system that can aim up or down a few degrees, a four motor drive, and a rubber band tread combo intake that fed balls into the flywheel. I'll go over each module of the robot in more detail as I go along, talking about what I've learned and what I would do differently. We competed in six matches against five other robots, and Samwise went 6-0, which I was incredibly happy about. The drivetrain was a four motor drive with two encoders, one on each side. The encoder wheels seemed to have a little bit more resistance than the other wheels, so if I was doing it again, I would connect the encoders to the motors via a chain or other method to perhaps prevent snagging, although different mounting could perhaps remedy that issue. The robot could not get on the platforms, but that could also be fixed by lowering the wheels and perhaps adding power wheels in the center, as another team at the competition did, and it seemed to work very well. On one side of the chassis was the Cortex. Not too much to say there, but right above that was a potentiometer that allowed us to change our autonomous. Turned to the right, it was red, to the left, it was blue. On the back of the chassis was the intake, a small rubber band intake that pushed balls up a curved plate made using a slip roll. The intake was much too small, it should have been much wider, forcing the balls to the center as they rose, as opposed to simply having the intake push in a straight line, as it was very difficult to collect balls in the matches. Wire management was serviceable, not a work of art, but there wasn't a ton of time to make the wires beautiful. We also had a post on each side of the chassis that helped us get the low flags more easily. The flywheels were aimable using a linear slide, similar to the one used in my tutorial video, link in the description, except using the newer slides which are wider. The slide had to be attached to both the chassis and the flywheel at a single pivot, so it could change its angle dynamically, otherwise it would jam and would not move. It could have aimed up or down more, but the motor was kind of in the way, so it restricted the movement. The flywheels themselves were inspired by a video from Blake Farmer, from which the gear ratios were 144 to 5.76. The flywheel from the video supposedly used two turbo motors, but we ended up using four high-speed motors to great effect. We could have used four turbo motors, but by the time that we thought about that, we decided to just keep it the way it was. The gearing was actually fairly difficult. One side behaved perfectly, but the other was just annoying. It slowed down too fast, the motors overheated, and it was just a real pain. We spent so much time trying to reduce friction on that side, it was ridiculous. After a lot of work, checking the axles to make sure that they weren't bent, trying to defriction it as much as possible, the flywheels could easily clear the fence from the other side of the field, so the aiming system was, was quite helpful. A similar effect could be achieved without the aiming system by just manipulating the motor speeds. I've heard that teams in the past used encoders to track the RPM of the flywheels, so that's something I plan on doing in the future. We use rubber bands to increase the diameter of the flywheel slightly, helping to grip the ball better than the wheels would normally. The flywheels were all in all really good and fairly reliable to boot, so I'm super happy with that. Our autonomous was a fairly good one, and it was on par with the best autonomous at the camp. They both scored four points on a good day. Our autonomous would rev up the flywheels, feeding in our preload to shoot the top flag before driving in to push the bottom flag. It backed up and turned to push the bottom middle flag. This worked extremely well on the blue side, but we didn't go for the middle flag on the red side. It was acting strangely, and we didn't have enough time to go through the code and try and fix it in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and if you liked it, then you know what button to hit. And if you want to watch more Vex and other robotics and electronics content, be sure to subscribe. I'm constantly working on new videos, so stay tuned.